friends, and welcome to your horoscope for June 2020. Virgo, this month it is busy, and I have to tell you, Virgo, I think that this month, especially in the arena of home and friends, this is going to be a time where repairs need to be made. We're coming into a point in the season where we're going to have 60% of our planets in retrograde fashion, so it means there's a slowdown, and there's a time to go back over these 4th house and 11th house areas of your life. Not to mention, we're going to have eclipses this month, which set a stamp for about six months, and they're happening in your fourth and 11th houses. So some of these relationships or some of the dynamics in these areas of your lives, I think, are looking for repair and a little bit of shift. So, and it's, it's interesting because I even just have this sense as I'm saying it. That some of you Leos, I think maybe you haven't moved, but maybe you've like wanted to move or you've wanted to make a new home in some way, shape or form, Virgo. So it, it could be very much so be a place, Virgo, where you're like, my home is changing. My, I, I want to make a new home in some way, shape or form. But that would also, if you take that step to have this new home, whether it's the internal foundation or a physical location, it seems like you're also attracting a new tribe of people or friends to you. And during this next six months, the um, friendships or the associations or the groupings that you have, Virgo, are going to be tested and challenged to make sure they're the right fit to come to your new house, whatever that happens to be. Oh my gosh, let's jump in here and let's talk about what's happening this month. First of all, at the very beginning of the month, kicking off more retrograde energy, on the 2nd, Mercury is going to move into shadow time. So this is the period right before it actually stations retrograde. And so things start to slow down. The planet is slowing down and he's getting ready to take this retrograde on the 18th. This is going to be in the energy of Cancer. So truly for you, friends, social groupings, um long-range plans and goals and designs that you've had for yourself, especially about things that make you feel emotionally secure, especially things that make you feel loved, supported, cared for, nourished. This is a time where you're going to come into a heavy season of review during Mercury retrograde. But right now on the second, it's just shadow time. Things are starting to slow down. So if you feel in these areas or with friends in your life or with the groupings that you've maybe been a part of, if you're feeling a little bit testy or a little bit edgy even being there, that's okay. It's just an indicator that something's trying to get your attention or if you're feeling really drawn to something that maybe you interacted with, with in the past, this is a time to start to take note of kind of what's starting to show up because it'll be a really good indicator to you as you finish out the retrograde and take some forward moving actions, okay? On the 5th, we're going to have a lunar eclipse, but it is a full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Sagittarius. Now, this will light up your fourth house. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we make a shift because we've got all of this light. And it makes us aware of something that we couldn't be aware of before. But at a lunar eclipse, we're also having a resetting of our emotions, of our perceptions of this particular arena. And that lasts six months down the road. So in your fourth house here, I just keep seeing this Sagittarian traveler. Your house is changing. Your home. The fourth house is home. Family, real estate, property. Sometimes somebody leaves your house. Sometimes somebody comes into your house. Sometimes you're doing a thorough house cleaning because you're like, I just need my physical space to be different. You're preparing for whatever is next for you. Now, also in the fourth house too, because this is a lunar eclipse, what can sometimes happen is that family or family members get a little bit testy. Right? There's a little bit of a crisis that happens when we are at a lunar time. Is So you could even find with some of your family members or in the place that you call home, um, you could find having a little bit of crisis. Oh, I'm just seeing this vision to Virgo for you. Because this is going to be a high Cancerian month as well with some of these energies, what could be happening for you at this lunar eclipse is that your home, like inside here, in the place that wells with emotions and and feelings and it's not going according to plan this could really be very lit up for you this month and it's just because you're changing home for you is changing okay oh that is beautiful for you guys so i would love to hear about that please tell me how this manifests for you in the comment section down below on the 18th mercury is going to actually take that retrograde in the energy of cancer now again this is going to light up your 11th house and mercury retrograde 
When the planet is retrograde, we're going back. We're re, reconsidering, reuniting, reevaluating, reviewing this area of our lives. And this is your 11th house. Friends, social groupings, organizations, causes that you support. Um, it is also social media, the place that you connect socially with people. And the next phase of development. What are your long-range ambitions, plans, goals, and designs for yourself? Because you may have a beautiful plan, but if you also don't have the right tribe to help you get there, this is where Mercury Retrograde is going to help you get detailed and look at where your support crew is at. Look at where your friend family is at. But Mercury retrograde can also put a pressure on these groupings for you. It's almost like the relationships here or the vision around this area of your life gets a little bit tested to see if it really can withstand the test of time. So if that's what's happening for you, just know you're in full review and it's only to make sure that these areas of your life are brimming with enthusiasm and health and support and love, okay? On the 20th, we see the sun now coming into the energy of cancer. So light, heat, life and vitality. You're motivated and then the friends Zone. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit busy for you, whether it's busy online or you're actually getting to have like a social distancing birthday party in a parking lot somewhere, or you're just busy communicating with other people, supporting other people even, because this is a Cancerian energy. Then on the 21st, we're going to welcome in the new moon solar eclipse to join all of this energy that's already happening in Cancer. Now, the new moon is typically where we plant these seeds of intention to build something over the next six months, right? But actually what I think happens here for you is that it is like, yes, plant your seeds of intention to build something for the next six months. But at this particular eclipse, because it's at zero degrees of cancer, um, I think that one of the things that happens is genuinely in your friendship group, something significant ends to make space for your requested intentions here, right? And sometimes at the new moon, I don't think it's always like that. You can say, okay, right where I'm at today, let me plant and let me just have a new perspective. And instead with the solar eclipse, I genuinely think it's like my... My Virgo life force doesn't feel supported. I'm ready to end it now. But you'll see that energy adjust. You say no so that you can say yes over the next six months. So definitely let me know what that means for you. Zero degrees is a very significant point. And if your birthday happens to be on the 21st to about the 23rd, this is a significant time for you. There are important changes happening for you. It'll be a part of a cycle for you at this time. So make sure that you are paying attention what's happening in this area of your life or wherever it's actually happening in your chart. But it's a big time for you. On the 23rd, Neptune's taking a retrograde. It's going to be in the energy of Pisces, which is right across the street. So your seventh house. This is the house of relationships, okay? Now, as Neptune is direct, we have space to daydream. It's kind of ideal. We walk between the worlds. I think there's a lot of grace, a lot of compassion with people in our relationships, which is not just romantic relationships. Conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, friendships, business, um, contract negotiation comes in here as well because it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? And of course, marriages fall in here as well. But when Neptune goes direct, the reality of our reality is not buffered by Neptune's kind of dreamy energy. So it is very concrete. The reality of your relationships will likely feel very heavy here. It makes reality feel distorted because you're like, wait, that's not what I thought it was. Or wait, what's happening here? And it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you come very much so into a concrete sense of reality. Now, <clears throat> what Neptune's actually doing during the retrograde in your seventh house is he's asking you to create your ideal, right? He's like, let's step back. Let's retrograde and step back. And I want you to create your ideal. What would you like in your relationships? Who would you like to be? What is your sane, sound relationship ideal? Who do you want to show up as? Who do you want to have in your life? And that includes romance, business, and friendship, right? So Neptune's asking you to create the ideal so that as he comes out of retrograde in November, you can create that and have that in material reality. And the example I always use, Virgo, is that before a chair was a functional material chair useful piece of equipment it was just a vision we got to vision these things so that we can bring them into reality so this is a wonderfully um spiritual time i think for you around relationships who's your spirit tribe who makes you feel supported who enhances your creativity and asks you and supports you walking forward
On the 25th, Venus is going to come out of retrograde at five degrees of Gemini. So this is still lighting up the tip top of your chart, right? We have got energy in the career sector. Now, Venus has been retrograding here. So you've spent some time, about 40 days, looking over value. What's the value? Am I getting my value? Do I value this? Do I value what I'm known for? It's a very big question of value of relationships and finances and likely too. Your house is changing so much this month that I think during the Venus retrograde, maybe even some things that happen is you were re-evaluating your money, right? If you're trying to move or you want to move or something's changing in your house, you would have been re-looking at your money, right? But now, as Venus is out of retrograde, you can take action on some of those things that you saw. And I also think at the tip top of the chart, Virgo, Venus makes you very attractive and you're speaking well. Like people are receiving these words like butter, right? Like you're very magnetic. Venus has a beautifully emotionally um, intelligent way to work with you here in the energy of Gemini. So don't be surprised if you're being asked to speak at something or if you feel like speaking or you're just having more of a social time when it comes to business or maybe you're writing. You've gone back to writing or creating in some way, shape or form. But it is certainly a time where Venus is bringing the magnetism and the benefits to you here at the top of your chart. Yeah, for some of you, she will definitely bring some money in. This could definitely be a promotion or just a change in pay rate for you. On the 28th, Mars is coming home into the energy of Aries where he is all the comfortable, right? Now, this is going to light up your eighth house space, so it's a wonderful energy to use Mars. He's like action, energy, assertion, aggression, movement, desire. But this is in your eighth house of joint resources. So this could actually be a time too, Virgo, where your partner has a change in money or finances or earnings in some way, shape, or form, or you guys are even changing... Um, the way that you you interact, the desires that you have for your life together. Now, if this is not necessarily in a romantic partnership, in any kind of partnerships like debt, you're cleaning out your debt, you're detoxing your body, you are paying back that loan, you are taking out a loan, you're doing a collaboration with somebody, you're getting that therapy, you're actually doing your astrology, you're practicing it. Remember, Venus is at the tip top of the chart. Speak your astrology, speak your healing craft. This will be a beautiful time to do that, but whatever it is, Mars is ready to go. He's ready to do stuff here. And what I can tell you is Aries trusts their instincts. So trust your instincts here, Virgo. You've got a beautiful energy to make space and take action in this particular area. Clean out, eliminate the things that do not feel like they are serving you and are of your greatest good, whether that be something financial or be something like very metaphysical, esoteric, whatever it is, let it go. Now, the other thing I'll tell you too is that Mars is happy to have the fight that's needed to be had, right? So if you got a fight with the IRS because you're like, absolutely not, that is not what I owe you, or you got a fight with another party because there's something legal going on. If there is a fight, if there is a purging or a cleansing that needs to happen, Mars is actually going to bring that uh, to your table because it just needs to be done, okay? As we close out the month, we're going to have Jupiter and Pluto coming together again for the second of their third set of conjunctions they're going to do. Now, we saw the first set in April, and they were both direct. So we know that here in the fifth house, right, the house of children, the house of joy, the house of play, expression, new creations, hobbies, risks, romance. You started something new then because as Jupiter and Pluto come together, they are like, boom, let's achieve right? And it is focus meets drive meets desire meets wisdom and expansion and you are just set to go. So you begun the change there in April. Now, as these two are in conjunction here, they are both retrograde. So in this exact same area, you're going to go back over what you started there. You need to make some edits. You need to make some adjustments. You need to review how is it going? Are you on course for where you want that drive and that success to be? As these two are retrograde here, what I love about it is that they show up ready to show you that you have an immense capacity, Virgo, to effectively and successfully surmount the challenges that come your way. They show you the value of continuing to want what you desired then and to continue to work for it. I think most of the time we forget or we're not aware of the full capacity we have to just really shine and to create this life that we want. Now, the other thing I think that these two show you here 
is that truly if you've got anything going on with children at this time because Mars is also in Aries that you just want to be a little bit more mindful with the children because everybody's retrograde and it's like it's great let's move some things forward this is a lot of astrological help I do think that there could be an accident that happens and I'm not talking car crash or anything so don't get crazy you know the the bumps and the scrapes all of the things that are a part of life but definitely with Mars and Aries you guys watch these kids and sharp objects okay so just be mindful of that put the scissors up high we don't run with knives none of that okay so just be mindful of the influence not to mention neptune is retrograde so everybody's reality will feel a little bit distorted as we really get into the retrograde so pay attention here make the adjustments you've got this okay all right virgos i think it's going to be a busy month but i think it's going to be a beautiful month okay I have got people coming over to the cyber house for the eat and greets and I cannot wait to share these people and their abundance of information with you, their great love of astrology and helping and teaching people. So we have got people lined up all the way until July so far and more are coming in. So keep watching the community page, the Facebook, the, um, of course you can watch YouTube here, but the Instagram, wherever you follow me, keep watching. I'm going to tell you who's coming up next, but I'm telling you, I'm bringing a team of friends who are just as excited to be here as I am to have them and share them with you. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye Virgo.